morning. We are going to be going to the Ruins. Um, oh, sorry. I'm just recording. <laughs> oh, I thought you were checking the map. No, no. Oh, oh, I'm not checking the map. It has some map. Paola. We're on our way in the morning. It's 7.30. Okay. There you go, you can buy a purse here. <laughs> They're really beautiful. And yeah. Saw, yeah, they have these in small as well. Oh, yeah. They are really, really beautiful. They have like a yeah, yeah. intricate. Yeah, you can see one. You have like this market that only sells this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. The market is beautiful. You think like you are in the middle of the country. Yeah, it's really nice. It's really nice. It's really nice. So we made it to the ruin place. Guelu GPS actually gave us to the wrong area, so we had to reroute back. So we walked really long <laughs> to get here. But it was tower, so we're just gonna go get our ticket and then head on out. Luckily, I can speak a little bit of Spanish, so I can get a little bit of this. <laughs> So we got a tour guide, Francisco, who's going to be helping us kind of navigate um, the area so we can learn more about the ruins and the historical artifacts of it. Alright, um, just in case one of you uh, want to use the bathrooms. The main uh, subject is the archaeological part, but we have a feeding and breeding program of the scarlet macaw which mm -hmm. is our national bird you know this, this 
program, you know, uh, also have incubation machines, you know, and the purpose is to multiply the population. Mm -hmm. So far, we have about 130, you know, scarlet macaws. Mm -hmm. oh. they, uh, they, um, they get food here, you know, in, in about 150 meters, you know, you, you'll see the area. They get fresh fruits, you know, seeds and all that. So they have a good life, because, you know, the purpose to have them here, you know, so mm -hmm. the visitors can, you know, see these birds. Also, you have many, many species of birds that live in a, in a forested area of 24 square kilometers, which is a national monument, you know, protected by law uh, since 1982 by the state of Europe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we 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 Let me show you. Uh -huh. Okay, how these are very old aqueducts. Mm -hmm. uh, it has an extension of 811 meters, and, it, and the direction is to the Kokanas River. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the purpose of this was to avoid the floating. Mm -hmm. uh, when the Maya was there, when, when they were settled here, okay. Uh, also, they use uh, some uh, uh, material called stucco, which was the cement of the Maya. You know, it was uh, the stucco. They get it from the nature. You know, they mix uh, materials like lime. This is the artificial nest that they use for the macaws. They're going to hear our sounds. They're very loud. You know, you, you will see them flying. You, you, you'll see them. You'll see them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this is an altar, you know, of what was left here by the Maya, you know. It's not really important because it doesn't have any inscription, but it's a good idea to uh, to know what is the kind of stone that the Maya use here. Mm. Okay, our uh, um, scientist communities have been here, you know. You know, for like all these decades ago, and the geologists particularly, they studied this stone and they found that that is volcanic origin. It's soft and workable. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have volcanoes around here, but we did, you know, millennials ago. So, uh, although uh, this was a fortune to the Mayans to have this soft, soft uh, stone because they could express their virtuosity in the carbon around, you know, which white Copan is very famous in the, you know. In, uh, in the world of the, of the high relief carbon and also in the temple facade, you know. Uh, oh, all right. Uh, they also check the, the surrounding areas, and they are about three in the in the hills. They are outcrops. They, you know, they query the, the stone from the outcrops. You know, found Copan at the same at the same time. This is a mound. Okay, one of the most beautiful mounds that we have here. Okay, uh, and the first explorers, by the way. Uh, uh, were here in 1839. It was John Lloyd Stephens from, it, it was a, an explorer and a diplomat from the United States, you know, and uh, he was traveling with Frederick Catcher, with an Englishman, mm -hmm. you know, uh, he was a very talented driver, okay, they, he came down here, you know, from, uh, he was in Mexico, you know, before, uh, Guatemala and then Copan. Okay, he came here and he's, they settled here for, for a few months, they start. They start studying these uh, Mayan ruins. You know, he uh, he did a very beautiful drawings. You know, meticulous drawings of the ruins of Copan of, of the Estile. And uh, and after uh, a couple of years, they he published a book in New York. You know, in 1842, called uh, Incidents of a Travel. You know, mm -hmm. in Central America. John Lloyd Stephen, you know, uh, he was very surprised by it. it was all covered, you know, it was, all mm -hmm. the temple was buried, you know, mm -hmm. and because Copan was abandoned for centuries, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it was basically like this, especially the, the high, the high part, you know, oh. the, the plazas, they were like that, but they, it took like 75 years to unbury all the temples that you're about to see. Okay. But how do you initially, like, how do you do that well, but some of them, you, 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 some 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 like bleachers, you can see it ah, outside. You can, you, can, you, you can see it outside. So they were like, okay, there's something here. Yeah, you say something in there. Okay. <laughs> They were, they were, they swim. Oh. It was like some kind of swim, you know? <laughs> they use the water. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, that's very smart. They, 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 they flow the water at the wheel. 
Yeah. You know, they were smart by it, you know. They were, they were great engineers, yeah, you know, really and yeah. <laughs> yeah, builders. Okay. Um, in front of us, we have a, you know, the Acropolis. Okay. This that's a term that the scholar that scholars borrows from the Greek that means city on the hill. And this mm -hmm. is exactly what we have here, a city, you know, on top of the hill. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, it looks like a natural formation, but it's not. It's an artificial, uh -huh. you know, uh, mountain. Yeah. yeah, so what, you know, what happened is that at the beginning, in the 426, when the Maya, you know, start their kingdom here, you know, they have a custom of built and destroyed. What oh, okay, when yeah. the king died, okay, uh, he built, he have a, a new city, and the new king, he literally destroy everything and, and and build on top you know so because of that in a, a lapse of 350 years they they were building like a structure over the structures level mm -hmm. over level you know and uh, uh, finally good eye <laughs> like sorry yeah. to as you go like oh there's something there's really red right cause yeah, yeah. Oh. i want you to enjoy the tour <laughs> Wow, okay, this is uh, a cute In among them, they, are, they were like the, the, the rain god, Chalk, the maze god, you know, and the song god. Mm -hmm. okay, they venerate, you know, the, the, their god. Okay, we also have a, a, on top of that platform two sculptures of seashells. Uh, those are symbols of fertility, oh. you know, as well. You know, alligator head. You know, those are powerful symbols of fertility. They believe that by having them, uh, their women will be fertile. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, we have also um, I, I, along the first tier. There's an I have a inscription. Okay, that's why a college call it that the inscription temple. And there, there that all varies the information. You know about the arrival of the first ruler of in Copan. You know, Kinesh uh, Kinesh Ashkutmo. And also, oh, we have um, uh, in the middle. It's a sculpture. It's very. Uh, it, it has a lot of erosion. Very eroded. So, Copan was considered like the city of the bat. And the emblem of Copan is a bat head with a leaf nose. Oh. You know, uh, we have had a lot of bats in you know back in the day. So, <clears throat> you cannot see it very clear. You know, but it's a bat. There is a sculpture in profile of a, a personage holding a ball. That represent the ancestral bowl game oh. that the Mayan, you know, play in all the Mesoamerica area. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in the back we have the highest temple here, which is the Temple 16, Temple of War and Sacrifice. You know, it has 35 meters high. high. You know, like I said, we don't have really big pyramids, you know, like mm -hmm. in other places. But uh, also um, here we have the first stila. I'll be there in the back, you know, it's a low relief carving, you know, of a monolith that represents the 11 king. Have the, you know, the the portrait of the I two main, I mean, between yeah. the first and last king of Copan. This is very, very, very nice. Let me show you. This is this feature that they found in, the, in, in his tomb. We mm -hmm. have the J bar here, okay, mm -hmm. the square shield with the serpent motif. The goggle that represents chalk, the rain god, on the headdress. Headdress, we have the two birds, you know, in the fusion way. The pig eye part of the body and tail. Mm -hmm. We have this, this, this Josh, it means blue dream. Okay, we have Josh Kutmo, the first king, the founding father of the Mayan dynasty, giving the power scepter to the last king of Copan, and mm -hmm. his name was Josh Kasa Chanjopat. It yes. means the Lord of the Sunrise. Uh -huh. okay. He, we, we have a total of 16 kings. There are four sculptures in each side. 
making total of 16. Oh. Okay, in the chronological order of the first, second, his son, and they are four. Okay. Oh, okay, so on the side. Oh, exactly. Nice. Yeah. Oh, wow, we have cool. we have the whole wow. the whole royal lineage that develops after the death of Josh Kugmo, you know, in the 400 year period. Wow. In the 1970s, archaeologists believe that this, this was a meeting of astronomers, but later, you know, they found out that no, they are the they are the kings of Kopa. So the first king and the last king. The first king. This is okay. This is a mythical meeting that it happened in the under in the underworld in, in the Shivalba. Mm -hmm. They believe that this is the place of the death. Mm -hmm. All of the rest are dead. The only guy alive, the king, is Josh Kosa, and he commissioned this altar in the two in the uh, July second, seven hundred sixty-three. And that day is here. It's in Maya six Kaban. 10 malls because that's the date that he commissioned at this altar and on top there are 36 hieroglyphs that it speaks about the ceremony you know of the chanka will you know this ritual happened in Teotihuacan the first king went through this chanka will ritual well he received the divine charter the kawil you know and it said that happened on a witena witena is a house of origin a tree root house mm -hmm. when you translate it so he received the you know uh he was trained there Teotihuacan Mexico it was some kind of military academy mm -hmm. where where uh, also the kings of Tikal and Teotihuacan and Palenque went to the same root chunk of world for you know, ritual. Oh. So after that he came down here and conquered Kofan by force. But there are information in some hieroglyphs that he came here in the 416 to explore the area. Oh. Oh. Sorry, what's the, the number here? It's the Maya 6 Kaban 10 Mall, July 2nd, 763. It's the date. These are all the kings. Kototu kings. Kototu no. This is the last king, Josh Pasa, and the first king. So what, what, what Josh Pasa is doing is scriptures. Well, like and in them, the, 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 the collapse the start. The collapse, the so-called collapse. He did the shelter and then he started the collapse. And then he didn't yeah. know. Uh, well, he, he <laughs> did it for some reason. Then it just, it, it did, you know, so some of you believe that the interpretation is that he's sending a message. He's trying to say, I'm a legit, legitimate king. Ah. You know, uh, they say, practice the sacrifice, you okay. know, like other cultures around the world, mm -hmm. you know, to get territory. They, the Mayans, in the case of Copan, they control a vast territory of about 125 kilometers right here. Oh. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, also represents, you know, the sacrifice of the, these animals like jaguars, you know, like deer. Talking about sacrifice between the altar queue and the temple. Exactly over there, that oh, where it. those stones are, mm -hmm. they found 15 skeletons of jaguars. Oh, and wow. By the, 15, 15 by, of by jaguars. By, by wow. then, they, there were 15. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it, the jaguar was a very important animal because it, it represents strength and beauty. Mm -hmm. yes. And they also used the jaguar pelt to mm -hmm. their uh, royal dress mm -hmm. and also to put it on over their uh, stone beds. Wow, I really want to like climb up this, but we can't <laughs> climb up. Like, I, I really, oh, you can do it. Oh, really? Oh, okay, I'm pretty nice. Fantastic. Mm, huge. I, I wasn't yeah. expecting it to be that huge. Me okay. too. I actually, I'm surprised how big it is. I thought it was yeah. small, but it's actually pretty big. Okay, this is basically where they have their houses, you know, but, you know, especially the king, where he lived with his family. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, talking about this area, also, is an area that only the elite have access. Oh. You know, uh, and only the uh, the nobles, the king, and the, and, the, the, and the scribes. Okay, in this area, um, the uh, archaeologists started making excavations in 1980, and they found a lot of skeletons. And then 
uh, they call it locally like the cemetery. Mm. It was very normal to think that it was a cemetery, but it wasn't officially. You know, they find later, you know, um, uh, that this was uh, the place where they live. But they did that for one purpose. They buried their dead in front of their houses. Oh, you know, to venerate them. Mm. You know, uh, this was very practiced by other, uh, uh, you know, Mayans in the uh, Mesoamerica area. Okay, uh, they, uh, in the case of the parents, they bury them inside the house. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a veneration, you know, for a form. Okay, uh, also, that is structure that you see there in the corner, that was the royal palace of Josh Bosa, where he lived with his wife. So, you know, he, they practiced polygamy. We can, we can prove that because anthropology, they found one, uh, they found one um, male skeleton surrounded by a female skeleton. You know, in the case of the king, they, 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 they could have different women. Okay, they also have, they, they have, they, uh, they did the daily activities here, you know, they, where they eat, they cook, they did children's play, you know, what they did, they, uh, they basically, you know, did everything here. Okay, uh, also in the back, you know, we have 24 fire structures. Uh, those uh, they uh, you know, archaeologists, you know, uh, analyze that they were for administrative purposes. So, Possibly the scribe had his office there and took you know direct orders from the king. You know? Okay. Uh, also in that in that temple in the back, you know, or house, if this, we can say that they found that to am empty tomb. So it was possibly from one of his wives. Mm. You know, uh, we're not entirely sure. You know, archaeology is not exact science, so there's still standing some mm -hmm. stuff that you know we are sure about. Right. We don't They, the anthropologists, they didn't find any evidence of any intent. Okay, oh, uh, uh, they, uh, they, they didn't find any anything here. So they managed two theories that possibly his body was stolen, mm -hmm. you know, uh, with the offerings. And uh, all their theory is that his family, you know, take his body and bury him in the kitchen. That's the theory. Okay, and next to his tomb, we have the funerary temple, the Temple 18. Oh, okay. You know, uh, they have a custom when they came back, they build funerary temples, you know, over their tombs. This is what the archaeologists were able to, uh, you know, put together. Archaeology is like a big puzzle, you know, sometimes you can put all the pieces together, sometimes not. Okay, we have the here part of this custom, you know, uh, and here also you, we can see some uh, head upside down, mm -hmm. what is like a war trophy. We have, mm -hmm. we can see his sandals, you know, and these elements are, you know, of decoration elements. Okay, and on the other side, we can see his face in profile, mm -hmm. his very in a lens, you know, and where his exultant, himself mm -hmm. was a great warrior. Right, and part of and also you can see the sandal is another part of his royal, you know, costume. So clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the, and the other one, I know you, you, I saw it, I you saw it, you can see the hip yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> the nose, yeah. the nose yeah. and all that, all that detail. So here, you know, uh, in, the, in the case of the Mayan occupy, you know, by the 426, you know, uh, they were not, they were not warriors. They were a peaceful society, mm. but uh, gr gradually, you know, when they were, uh, you 